I think I am going to have to gird my loins and iron my kilt with a view to watching Outlander. I will be quite candid with you here and confess that I did watch half of the first episode and decided it wasn't for me. Was that a man thing to do? Are most of the viewers women? A panic alarm goes off in my brain. Have I said something, sexist? Am I about to embark on some, mansplaining? I trust not. Let me explain, I've never considered myself much of a man. Indeed, when folks say to me, as they do pretty much daily, when you are reincarnated, what do you want to come back as? I always say, I think this time I'd like to come back as a man. No, my mission this week is to examine the effect of Outlander on Scottish culture, despite knowing little about the latter and almost nothing about the former. What I do know is I used to ken some females who were in an Outlander fan club, based on the books and before the TV series came out. And a nicer, smarter bunch of lassies you could never hope to meet. Getting more excuses in before I begin my exegesis, I should say also that, occasionally, one detects a feeling that in abjuring items of popular culture one is being aloof. Not so. I've just never had much luck with tellies. The last one broke down, and the current one only gets BT Sport down the internet line. I don't have an aerial for the normal stuff, and the bank won't give me a mortgage to have one installed. So, all that out of the way, you ask, what prompts you to bring your excellent forensic skills to the television series Outlander? I'm glad you asked that. The answer is that the University of Glasgow is to host a major conference on the series next year, with tip-top academics hollering about its history, customs, politics, culture, clouds and music. Willie Maley, a professor at the uni, claimed outrageously, the globally successfully Outlander series has triggered more interest in Scotland and its history than any other cultural artifact in recent years. I said outrageously purely for dramatic effect, as Professor Willie is indeed correct. The Outlander phenomenon is out of control, sweeping the world and bringing hordes of, er, uh, non-male gender types to this country in the hope of fiddling with the cairngorms of rugged, kilted men who stravake hither and yon with their eyes ever fixed on the misty horizon. I always fear they will be disappointed by the grimy weather, grey-hulled Kunzel hooses, standard-issue trousers and also, well, by the men. The last great screen classic to attract worldwide attention to We Scotia was Braveheart, the true story of warriors in Wode who fought and died for a devolution settlement based on a federalist structure. Like Outlander, it was said to be romantic, but you couldn't take away the hard facts of the spectacular scenery, much of it in, uh, Ireland. All in a for more on this story, visit the news article link.